everyone. Uh, our next presentation starts in a few seconds, and uh, I have the pleasure to introduce uh, Larissa Dosabe from Rwanda with a study case of data collection and data sharing for rural water supply management in uh, Rwanda. Thanks uh, for, for everyone. My name is Dosabe Larissa. I work in Wasak. Is it working? My name is Dusabe Larissa. I work in Wasak. It's a water and sanitation corporation that works in Rwanda. And my colleague is Jean Igarashi. He works in JICA. He's a JICA expert. We are currently having a, like a technical collaboration. So Rwanda is a small country located, uh, located in East Africa. And the capital city is Kigali. We have like 11.9 uh, million population and uh, our superficy is 26.34 kilometer, thousand kilometers. And the language spoken are Kinyarwanda, English, French, and Swahili. The regional Islam and Christianity. So Jaika, it uh, has a project in Rwanda called Rugwasom. It, this project aims at strengthening the operation and maintenance of rural water supply systems. It started in 2015 in April and will end in December 2019. So they, they, we had the capacity building of Wasak staff and Fomodo district. They are the eastern uh, districts. They are the one that uh, endured several droughts due to the, their locations. So Wasak has uh, two main services, the urban water and sanitation services, where he is a uh, service providers. He supply water to the end users. And in rural areas, he acts like a supporter because the infrastructure are owned by the district. They are the ones that are, that are the infrastructure owners and they hire like private, private operators. We currently have 32 private operators in 27 districts. So what WASAC does, the rural department, it develop guidelines and the operation and maintenance manual for each system for the sustainability of the system. And we manage their monthly report to see if they are like working efficiently, they are providing a good services. And currently we were working on mapping and, and management of water supply systems. So we targeted to reach 100% of water access by 2020. And as we know, SDGs target 100% in 2030. But we couldn't achieve it without knowing the current assets we had. So that's when uh, the data collection came in for a better monitoring and evaluation of the water supply system we had and to make proper decision, like to know where we, did, we need to improve our services or expand our network and in planning like new projects, new water supply system projects and also improving operation and maintenance activity. Like if you don't uh, do operation and maintenance activity in a good manner, your system will not be sustainable. You will have to reinvest. So why using FOS4G? Because we had a limited budget. And it's easy with FOS4G, this problem was solved. And we had the wide area. In urban areas, the target area are currently in Rwanda, it's very small. So FOS4G is more easier to expand. And for the skills also, you can get more information on the internet for FOS4G. So you can, you can learn for yourself. So that's the asset we, we collected. We went from, from each water supply system, from the source, we featured all, uh, all uh, infrastructure components on each water supply system and their attributes, like uh, what they were built, uh, their, their um, equipment, discharge, all those materials, etc. So we, ha we, have cur we currently have like, 1.058 thousand water supply systems and the, the length of the pipeline are 1.388 thousand kilometer. So this is the roadmap. 
From July to February 2019, we had a training on data collection of district water and sanitation support engineer. They are the one who were in charge of correcting the data so that we can get accurate data. And uh, from February 2019 to April 2019, we had like offline access. Because we are working in remote areas, you can't rely on internet accessibility and you, you need like, you need to, you need uh, to have data access to data for everyday operation and maintenance. And from April to, from April to May, there was a data cleaning. It was done by MIS specialists and JICA experts to, to, like, to have a database of where and accurate data. So now we are on the stage of data updating and analysis. We make analysis on to, to select areas that are most, uh, that most need uh, to have project, water supply system project, so that we can work toward uh, achieving our target. So this is the diagram showing all the process. So for data collection, we use GPS and SW map. It's not an open source, I know, but uh, it, it's easier to record attributes, like information you need to fill in. And uh, to, to, co to correct the GPS location error, we use the satellite imagery orthophoto. orthophoto. And then uh, we match data and attribute and location on QGIS, and we use the geo package by the same data structure with post Gs. So it's very, it was very easy to copy to the post Gs. So for offline data access, we run a script to take the G, the post Gs to the offline data set and then upload it to Google Drive and the users could download it easily. So the challenge we encountered during the data collection, mainly Q field doesn't have a snapping function. So you can't like, uh, you can't, you can't, um, you can't draw a network without having a snapping option. It, it couldn't be possible. And it's not stable for old Android. But uh, also due to the, our hilly land, SW map to collect data attribute information was not working properly, so we had to adapt ourselves. And uh, some water supply system were, were located in remote areas. So we plan to have like a report that could be produced online. So the Python script run it and produce the inventory report that is uploaded to Google Drive. And when you need a report, you can just download it. So for, for water supply system, there are some parameters that need to be monitored. So that's when Epanet is needed. But uh, it's not a, it helps in planning operation and maintenance, but uh, it's not very, it was not very easy to create data for Epanet application. So that's what happened. The post GIS was converted using Python script and uh, Google Drive. It was uploaded to Google Drive. Then the uh, INP file and C shape file were, were downloaded to Epanet and QGIS, where there is QOTA plugin. So what we are planning in the future? From now on, we are on offline access and data updating. But in late 2019, we plan to have like, to, to use LISMAP to update the data in real time because this one is more easy. And even editing and uh, putting in new attributes is, is more easier than QField. Online reporting using Jasper server. So this is how it works. QGIS, we design layer style and abroad, uh, upload QGS to LISMAP. LISMAP on connection, we propose to start making the server available in 2019, and we can, you can have it at the users on your computer or Android devices. So why LISMAP? Because it is easier to design layers in uh, more, it's easier to design layer style 
by QGIS, user access control and uh, zooming by layers. You can see like if you want, uh, that's a district in my country, it's called Guamagana. If I want like to do researches in Guamagana, it's more easier and I can get uh, the information I need in less time. And viewing attributes is more easy also, and switching, uh, switching layers. Measuring the distance and area, as you can see, it's, you can do it like uh, by um, inserting the researches, and then it gives you the area you are looking for. And also editing and uh, features and attributes. Thank you. We are a little bit earlier than questions, but uh, if you have any, and maybe we have enough time for questions and answers, so just uh, please start away. Did you, did you try with the newer Android versions? Or just the old ones, but the new ones work. The old ones don't. Did you did you test this? We have like uh, financial issues, so many of our users don't have new or, or new version of Android, and you can't force someone to buy something he didn't plan to to buy. It's like uh, a bit tricky. Thank you very much for the talk. I had a question about. The procedure, if I understood correctly, the actual, let's say, data collection was done by a group of engineers which went on the ground. Yeah. And is that the strategy also for future updating? Is that these engineers go back? Or is there any plans of actually having, say, more local data sources that might feed into the database? Because we wanted the do uh, these data uh, very quickly, the engineers did it, but we are now starting like uh, we are now starting to train lo local person, local technician how to do it, so that the engineer don't have to go back to the site to get the data. And also the new projects, they have to give uh, as built document to be also included, so we don't have to repeat the process again. Thank you for your nice presentation. Uh, We've done similar work in Uganda, but never came that far as completing it uh, all the way towards uh, IPANET. So I'm going to share this uh, also with uh, with my colleagues from Vitens Avidas International who have worked on this. There's just one question from my experience in Rwanda. Um, how easy was it uh, to get acceptance for uh, free and open source software, and especially QGIS? I think we had no; they had no other option because <laughs> it's, a, it, it's 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 more cheaper. And uh, they didn't have any other option. Because you remember from uh, yeah, what we I discussed before that uh, when, uh, when we wanted to do a project with uh, QGIS there, that all the donors agreed, but then they had to ask the, the local uh, beneficiaries, the University of Rwanda, and they said, well, we like the plan, but we want to use ArcGIS, and then we lost the project. So yes. I'm very happy to see that that's not generally applicable to, uh, to your country, so there's still hope. No, it's not generally <laughs> applicable. And uh, as you have seen in the introduction, we had like a goal to achieve 100%. And we were in 2018, and we, de we didn't even know the assets we had. So we had to do that. Great. Yeah. Any more questions? Thank you so much for your presentation, Larissa. Thank you. Algebraic. <laughs>